Hi, I'm recording this video for my GCSE Electronics students. I had a question from one of the students about using motion sensor and my general advice thus far has been for GCSE projects probably stay away from motion sensors the sort you can buy on eBay. Now there's nothing uh, inherently wrong with them uh, but if you're going to be doing an electronics project it'd be nice if you were to actually do some of the uh, rather than buying ready-made modules to actually do the stuff yourself but let's just quickly really quickly consider those one of those uh, ready-made motion sensors it, I don't have one to hand unfortunately but it looks something like that with with a dome on it little square thing and it's going to have uh, three pins and there's going to be the zero volts, there's also going to be the power supply and then there's going to be a digital out. Okay, so the digital out is then going to go to your uh, microcontroller um, which is going to process that that signal uh, and then say connect out to your LEDs or buzzers or whatever it is. Okay, so the microcontroller is going to process the digital signal from the sensor. Now those movement sensors, they're also known as PIR sensors if you want to look them up. Um, they're quite cheap, you can buy one on eBay, I'm going to guess, probably something like about a pound, 99p, something like that, if you get one from China. So they're quite affordable, um, but you know, you're buying there, you're buying a ready-made circuit basically, and it'd be much nicer if you were, if you want to have some sort of non-contact detection of something, not necessarily movement, but detection of something, it'd be quite nice if you were to implement this yourself. Okay, so that's what I'm going to cover uh, in the remainder of this video. So um, there is, a, or rather, there are several different ways that you can do that. Now, um, if you want to have some sort of non-contact detection, there's one way that you could do, and you could have uh, an LED, and we're going to have a, an infrared LED, so it's going to have a beam of light, and then we're going to have a detector and then say if that uh, beam of light is blocked maybe then we're going to have a logic signal change or perhaps if we have say that's that's like option one if say we've got a an emitter okay so the emitter is emitting light and then we also have the detector on this side if say then it bounces off something so it goes that way and then bounces this way and then this then changes its logic level okay so this will be the emitter detector emitter detector so uh, you can have it so it um, detects when the beam of light say is interrupted or you can have it when the um, beam of light is bounced back you know they work in both ways let's just quickly show you this working and then I'll show you the circuit okay and uh, give you a little bit of help about um, how it works we're not by the way going to go into the physics of it at all um, with the semiconductors because you don't need to know that at GCSE level right okay so first of all I'm just going to quickly demonstrate we've got the emitter and the detector so we've got the emitter here and we've got the detector and by the way this circuit is powered up uh, but you can't actually see anything. Now, um, it's because it's infrared and your uh, eyesight isn't sensitive to inf infrared light. If, incidentally, I, I can't really show you this easily now, but uh, if you were to get your mobile phone, uh, turn the camera on and then look straight at the at the LED, you may see a glow, okay? Um, because, yeah, that is, it's going to show on the, uh, on, the, on the screen. Anyway. Um, getting a little bit off point now, but if you want to know whether you actually get an LED, uh, if you want to know if you get an infrared light emitted, then you can uh, successfully, quite often, uh, use the um, camera on your phone. Anyway, so uh, what I've got at the moment, I'm just checking a an output voltage. We'll, we'll have a look at the circuit to know how that works. But if I interrupt the beam of infrared light, hopefully you'll see that. Look, now we're on four point something volts. And when I stop interrupting that beam of light, then it goes down close to uh, zero volts. So that would be like a, a logic low, and then that would be a logic high. So hopefully you agree with that. Okay. Uh, now let's put the uh, the emitter and the detector side by side this time. There may be a little bit of stray light coming across there. I mean, really, it should be like in a tube or something. 
So at the moment um, the emitter is just bouncing, oh, sending light out here has not necessarily been bounced back. A small component will be, but hopefully you can see that there is a degree of detection there, okay? So, yeah, I mean, if you were to um, make it more focused, maybe have like a little tube, get them closer together, uh, you could probably improve the response there. Okay? So, not worried too much about the mechanics of it there. Uh, just, to, just to prove that you can either use it to uh, check whether the beam is interrupted or whether it's bounced off. Okay, so, uh, we know that it sort of works. So looks like it's probably going to be viable. So how do we do this? So there's going to be two parts to it. We need the emitter and we need, we need the uh, detector. So um, the emitter is easy. The emitter is just a, it looks like a conventional LED, the, the symbol like that. If you're using Circuit Wizard, uh, you just drag in a conventional LED and then all you do you just uh, double click it I think and then you can then where you'd normally choose a colour you know like red or whatever uh, then you can just change it to infrared but basically that's it okay the only difference um, or particular difference that um, from from normal is that the forward voltage drop across this infrared LED is probably lower than you use. It's about 1.2 volts. So, for example, if this is a 4.5 volt supply, and you're dropping 1.2 volts here, then you'd be dropping 3.3 uh, across this resistor. And also the uh, let me just uh, note this down. Um, so this the VF will be about 1.2 volts, and the forward current will be about 20 milliamps okay so then uh, knowing that this is going to be if we were to make this measurement that this is going to be uh, about 3.3 volts and knowing that it's 20 milliamps and you should be able to calculate the appropriate value resistor there I'll leave that one for you to do yourselves okay so this this is the you could call this the um, the emitter subsystem if you like because it takes uh, an input and it emits something okay it's converting from one signal type to another um, so uh, then we need the detector now the detector is um, very easy actually but just be a little bit careful that you pay attention to how I'm doing this because the uh, what looks like what looks a little bit like an LED um, but actually you'll notice that the arrows are going to go in this time rather than coming out because it's not emitting photons, it's not emitting light, it's actually receiving it. And also notice that I have reverse bias this. Now this is a photodiode. Okay, so in fact it's an infrared photodiode. It's important to note that and this is reverse biased. Really, it's, it's rather important to have it in reverse bias mode. GCSE Electronics, don't worry about why, just, just do it, okay? Uh, if, you want, if you want the why, we can talk about that another time. So, and then we can then take this point as our output voltage from the detector, okay? So, this subsystem, that's the emitter. This subsystem is the detector and then this detector is outputting a signal which is then going to go to the next subsystem which would uh, likely be your microcontroller. Now, um, as I showed you before, it depends on how you're using it, whether you, you are interrupting the beam, uh, how far the actual emitter and detector are apart, or whether you're bouncing them off, say, a, uh, a white or reflective surface. Um, it might be that your output voltage is uh, could be used as a digital output, but then again, it might be that you might have to process it as an analog uh, input to the microcontroller. The, uh, the alternative as well is that you could do some sort of processing 
you could process this analog value out because truly it is really an analog value out put it into a comparator and then set a switching threshold uh, if you want to do that as well so that's another option well, I won't go into any detail on that in this video okay so um, how does this actually work well um, when there's when there's no light so when there's when there's no infrared light going uh, across here there's only going to be an extremely small amount of current that goes through the photodiode when it's reverse biased and that's called the dark current. Now don't worry about that but let, let's just assume that there's an extremely small current, in fact almost no current. Now if you've got virtually or as good as no current flowing through this photodiode the same will be true for the resistor and with no flow of current you'll have no voltage drop okay uh, because remember V equals IR so if you've got zero current over a known resistance then you're going to have zero voltage drop so if at this point here we've got 4.5 volts and we've got no voltage drop or no voltage difference or no potential difference here then if it's 4.5 volts with respect to ground it's still going to be 4.5 volts here because there's no voltage change that, that's assuming that we've um, got just a dark current in other words um, little to no infrared light falling on the photodiode when you have uh, incident light when you have infrared light falling on the photodiode then it starts to um, have a greater current flowing through here with a greater current then you've got a greater voltage drop uh, across this resistor so uh, when um, infrared light falls on it then you're going to have a, a lower logic level or lower output voltage here when there's none then it's higher okay so let's just just have a quick look at that again so uh, remember this is the uh, emitter and detector and so when there's very little infrared light falling on the detector this black one here uh, then we've got very close to the supply voltage and then when we've got uh, a large amount of infrared light falling on here then you have a, a larger current that's, be, that's able to flow through the photodiode which is in reverse bias so then the because of that larger current then you've got a larger voltage drop across this resistor so then the voltage here the output voltage this is uh, in fact let's just note that down that's V out the output voltage will fall to a low level um, so that's that's the way you can use it now if uh, you were say doing it the uh, other way where you are reflecting the light there's there's no change in the circuit at all it's just the logic's just changing a little bit okay i'll leave you to think about that because i, I don't want to be doing everything for you it's like uh try, trying to give you lots of lots of pointers but not do absolutely everything um suitable values um don't we you for gcse electronics you don't really need to do any calculations on this let me just give you 10k all right, so 10K, uh, you need an infrared uh, photodiode that's reverse biased. Uh, this is an infrared LED. They're always clear if I were to give you a pair of them, you know that the detector is the black one. Okay, I think it's black because it's blocking um, visible light and it's allowing the infrared light through. Um, and you just need to be aware that the infrared emitting LED has a forward voltage drop that's a bit lower than normal, so about 1.2 volts, and forward voltage, sorry, forward current of about 20 milliamps. Okay, so hopefully uh, that makes some sense to people. Now, um, I suggest this as a possible alternative to having a motion sensor, and um, or some sort of contactless sensor, and you know, there's there's various ways you can do this. As far as motion goes. Uh, you're not actually really going to detect necessarily detect motion what you're going to detect is that you know uh, there was a logic high and now it's gone to a logic low or was a logic low and gone to a logic high so you can assume that therefore something has gone past or gone through blocking some light or bouncing the light off or something like that uh, the other alternative is you could have uh, a pair of um, emitter detectors 
Um, and then so, for example, you could have like a detector here and, a, and a, another detector here. And then so then when something travels across, then you'll be able to see, you know, the direction of travel if that's the sort of thing you're doing. But it's that's very much uh, project dependent. Um, also, say, if you were measuring speed, let's say, I don't know, of a toy car or, or whatever, and you had um, a pair of these emitter, or you had two of these emitter detector pairs. Um, and so, you know, as your thing comes past, whatever the thing is, you're measuring the speed, as soon as it interrupts one, interrupts one beam, uh, then you could say maybe start the timing. When it interrupts the next beam, then you, you could stop the timing, and then you calculate uh, the duration, and then thus, uh, if you know the distance, then you can calculate speed. So, you know, it's, it's not really um, too difficult to do this. There are alternatives. Um, if you don't want to use photodiode, you can use phototransistors. And uh, yeah, they're just another thing which you can look up yourself. Um, I generally have found that the photodiodes work well for students. So yeah, I, I would suggest them. Um, I did briefly mention, I've just briefly mentioned it again without going into the detail of it. Sometimes the output voltages are not quite what you want for logic levels into a microcontroller. So then you need to use a comparator. Now we would normally use an operational amplifier for a comparator. So if you're one of my GCSE students, look back at your op amp notes. Uh, hopefully it's in there for comparators. And if you've got any questions about that, then, then just ask me and I can post another video about that. Okay. Right. That's it for the video. And hopefully that's answered some questions on how we can use infrared uh, emitter detector pairs to detect something. Okay. That's it. Thanks.